Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about motor ability. So motor ability is important to understand, especially when we're working uh, with training athletes or rehabilitation. Uh, it helps us understand why there are differences in performance between individuals, even if all other things are equal. So if training and experience and education and all those different things are equal, we'll still see differences in performance. And that comes down to motor ability. Um, so it gives us a basis for interpreting assessments when we assess performance. Uh, it helps develop methods to improve performance and to acquire new skills. And ability also influences the way that people learn and perform new skills. Um, so it's really helpful to understand motor ability and how they're developed and how they're different so that we can help improve learning and uh, rehabilitation and so on. So what is ability? Uh, so the word ability is used differently in all sorts of different contexts. Um, for our purposes here in motor control and learning, ability is an individual's relatively enduring trait or capacity that is a determinant of their achievement potential for the performance of a specific skill. Okay, so a motor ability is an ability that is specifically related to performance of a motor skill. So a motor ability is a relatively enduring trait or capacity. So it's sort of uh, something that we have developed. It's an ability that we've developed that sort of is maintained over a period of time. And whether we have that ability or how advanced that ability is, is going to be a determinant of the potential for performance of a skill that requires that ability. Uh, motor ability is also sometimes referred to as psychomotor ability or perceptual motor ability, and in most cases, um, different authors are referring to the same thing. Um, so abilities as individual difference variables. Um, so again, we can have two people that have the same training experience, the same amount of practice, uh, but can have different levels of motor abilities, which makes one person uh, able to achieve a higher level of performance than the other person. Um, so if we understand these individual differences, then we can help to target and improve those specific motor abilities to help kind of even the playing field, so to speak, um, so that both people could potentially achieve the, the same level of, um, of skill. So there's debate about whether motor abilities are related to each other or whether they're independent. So there are two kind of overarching theories about this, two conflicting theories. Um, the first is the general motor ability hypothesis. Now, this is not generally accepted in the scientific community. There's very little research evidence to support this, um, but this is kind of one side of the debate. Um, so the idea is that many different motor abilities can be identified within an individual, but they are all highly related and can be characterized collectively as global motor ability. So this suggests that if a person is highly skilled in one motor skill, then they could become highly skilled in all motor skills. Um, so this kind of lends support to the idea of like the all around athlete who's good at everything. Um, this kind of supports the idea that either you have high global motor ability and are highly capable or you are not or you're less than that um, rather than the idea that specific motor abilities can develop separately and are relatively independent um, so again this is not widely accepted in the neuromotor community um, but this is one side of the debate the other side of the debate is the specificity of motor abilities hypothesis. And this has significant research evidence in support. Um, so this is widely accepted and this is really how, how this concept is viewed in the community. Um, so this hypothesis says that motor abilities are relatively independent and an individual may have some and not others. Um, so a couple examples are like having high balancing ability does not predict reaction time. So you might have fast or slow reaction time, and that really has nothing to do with your ability to balance. Another example, like we talked about in a past video about reaction time, is that having fast reaction time does not predict movement speed. So reaction time and the speed of the movement that is the response after the reaction time, they're not 
you know, those two things are independent. You could have fast or slow reaction time and a fast or slow movement speed and those two abilities are separate. Um, now there are even questions about um, certain abilities and whether that is even one unified ability or whether those are really many different aspects of that ability that could be de developed individually. Um, so balance is one of those areas. Um, so balance is considered to be a multidimensional ability that is specific to the task or skill. So like you might have excellent balance ability in one particular skill and then have poor balance ability in a different skill that requires balance because it's a multidimensional ability. So really there are many different balance abilities within that overarching category. Um, so in this context, balance uh, refers to postural stability to maintain equilibrium while stationary or moving. It's static balance if you're stationary and dynamic balance if you're in motion. Um, so although what we need to be able to do is similar for static and dynamic balance, um, they have been demonstrated to be relatively independent. So somebody might have very strong um, balance ability in static balance and not very good or not very developed ability in dynamic balance or vice versa. So they are relatively independent. Um, no one test of balance is a valid measure of balancing ability because balance is not one unified ability. So there are many different ways to measure balance, many different instruments and testing protocols and things. Um, and there really aren't any, uh, not one single one that is considered to be a valid uh, test of balance as a whole. So really, if you wanna test balance, you need to incorporate multiple instruments or multiple different ways of testing uh, to be as thorough as possible for measuring balance ability. Uh, timing abilities are very similar. Again, it's considered to be sort of a collection of abilities rather than its own um, discrete ability. Uh, so timing is important uh, to successfully complete many different tasks. Uh, so that could be timing in movement, timing in interaction with an object in the environment. Um, timing is really critical in uh, many, many different tasks. Um, so there are different aspects of timing and we can develop abilities with those different aspects. Um, so external, also called anticipation timing, is precise timing in relation to external objects. So like hitting a baseball, you need to have your timing down and you have to get it right based on when the pitch is thrown and when the pitch is crossing the plate. Um, so you need to be able to anticipate the arrival of the ball and time it perfectly. Um, internal timing is timing based on our own knowledge of time um, like during walking, jogging, or dancing without music. So if there is music, then you are timing the movement to an external stimulus. So that would not be internal timing. Uh, but let's just say you're walking or jogging or you're uh, maybe practicing a dance routine, but without the music. So in that case, you're generating the timing internally. And so that's a very different thing than, than uh, timing that movement according to your external environment. Um, so again, just like with balance, there's different types of timing abilities, and these all appear to be independent and specific to the task. Um, timing ability is specific to the requirements of the skill being performed rather than a general timing ability. So not only do motor abilities in general not appear to be interdependent or, or correlated enough that we could just describe a global motor ability, but even specific abilities, specific motor abilities really are collections of sometimes dozens of uh, separate differently identifiable um, abilities that need to be uh, addressed and, and developed for certain tasks. All right, thank you so much for watching this video.